Renting a car can be an expensive hassle, but it doesn't have to be that way at all. In fact, I bet after watching this video, you'll look forward to the next time you need a rental car. I'm David G, and I've rented dozens of cars in countries around the world. Knowing how to hack my way to great car rental prices has been an integral part of why I've been able to afford traveling around the world for these past 10 years. There are 11 hacks that frequently save me lots of money on car rentals, and in this video, I'll be sharing them all with you. So buckle up, smash that like button, and let's navigate down the road of massive car rental savings. And a lot of these hacks can be used in combination to save even more money on rental cars. By combining hack number three with hack number 10, I was even able to get a car rental that usually would cost over $50 a day for just two euros and seven cents. So make sure to watch through all of these hacks to use them to their fullest potential. I usually like to start my car rental searches with Kayak and AutoRentals.com. Both of these websites are what's known as aggregator or meta search websites, meaning they show you rental prices from a wide variety of different rental car websites in one place. I find that using these two websites to start my search usually gives me a good enough idea of current pricing and availability to have a good idea of what rental car I'll want to book. But the key here is to avoid limiting yourself to searching with only one website when you're looking for a rental car. Let's say you've planned a week-long trip to Cape Town, South Africa, and you know you'll need a rental car for it. So you type in your search to both kayak and autorentals.com. And it looks like there's a pretty solid car rental deal that comes up with budget when you search on kayak. The cheapest price for that rental on kayak.com is $184.89, and you have to book it through Priceline. But if you had only searched on autorentals.com, you could still book the same car, but it would cost you $222. And if you went straight to Budget's own website, then you'd have to pay $209. So by searching on just two websites, you can save a lot of money in a matter of minutes. How you search for rental cars can have a huge impact on the deals available to you. But it's also essential to keep the timing of your rental in mind. Say you need to pick your car up at 3 p.m. on the pickup day, but can't drop it off until 5 p.m. on the drop-off day. Most of the time, the car rental company will consider those extra two hours as an entire extra day when calculating your price. But if you can manage picking up the car just two hours later or returning it two hours earlier, you could save a lot of money. Sometimes I've noticed people booking a rental car for the exact time that their flight's set to arrive at the airport. In reality, it will always take you some time to actually get to the car rental counter. Many airports even have separate car rental centers that you'll have to take a shuttle bus to. When I rent a car directly after a flight, I usually set the pickup time to be at least an hour after my flight's supposed to arrive. And if I'm arriving to a larger airport, especially if I'm flying international, I often set the pickup time to up to two hours after my time of arrival. Most rental car companies also offer at least a 29 minute grace period, so that's also worth considering when you need to time things just right. But still, every once in a while that extra hour could actually knock the price down. This is because the way that they sometimes price rental cars, it can actually be cheaper to book a rental for longer than you need. We'll look into that later in this video, but there's another really important hack that most travelers do not consider when they're booking rental cars. When I talk to people about renting cars, I often find that there's an assumption that it's going to always cost more to return your car at a different place than where you picked it up. This is not the case at all, and I've booked plenty of amazing prices for one-way car rentals. One of them even got me that car rental for about $2 a day in France, which we'll go over later in this video. Often, when you're searching for a one-way rental on the car rental company's own website, you will find that a one-way fee is included. But then when you input that rental into a third-party website like Kayak, you can often avoid booking without any one-way fees at all. I've even found that sometimes one-way rentals can be way cheaper than returning to the same location. For example, you could book a week-long rental picking up and dropping off at Tampa Airport in Florida for $680. But if you returned your car to West Palm Beach Airport, you could rent the same car from the same company for $127 less. This is just one of many possibilities for how to use this hack, and it can be a great way to see more in one trip. This hack seems to most often work well when the pickup and drop-off locations are in the same country or even sometimes in the same part of the country, and your pickup location receives more drop-offs than pickups. Another hack that you'll always want to use is to reserve your rental car well ahead of your trip. As soon as you know you're going to travel, reserve your rental car. Typically, rental car rates do not go down last minute, and as companies get booked up, the cheaper rates tend to vanish. But I always try to avoid booking anything non-refundable, and usually it's easy to find refundable rental car rates. Sometimes I have had to book on a third-party website, though, because even though sometimes rental car companies will have the same price on their own website, it will often be non-refundable on their website and then refundable on third-party websites. 
And booking a reservation that you can cancel for free is a seriously useful car rental hack. Booking a rental car with free cancellation means that if your plans change at all, you can just cancel it and rebook without losing any money in the process. And what's more is even if your plans don't change, you can still rebook if you find a better deal down the line. You'll often find slightly different cancellation policies depending on where you're booking, but most often free cancellation will be limited to either 48 hours or 24 hours before your pickup time. And then every once in a while, I'll come across a deal with free cancellation that still charges a small non-refundable fee. Unless the deal is just really amazing, I avoid those kinds of rates too. There's no sense in taking the chance of losing even just a few dollars if other competing websites don't require you to. Always make sure to read the fine print when booking your rental because these kinds of fees can be easy to miss. Another hack that I've used to save money a few times is to book at a non-airport rental agency. This is often a good way to save some money, but you do want to be sure that you can get to the location of the car rental agency without spending too much money or wasting too much time. Let's look at an example to see how this can work. Say you're headed to Vegas for a long weekend and you just need a rental car to get around, but you don't really care which car you get. Enterprise is charging almost $400 for the cheapest rental from their location at the airport. But you could hop in a $20 or $30 Uber or taxi and pick up the exact same rental in a different part of town for $132 even including the cost of what you'd have to pay to get to and from the off-site rental location you'd be paying less than half the price of what you'd have to pay at the airport it is really important to verify that the off-site locations opening hours work for you though while airport rental agencies often have really long hours and even sometimes operate 24 7 smaller locations may not be open when you need to pick up your rental but when rental prices are surging and off-site locations don't have lower prices either i've got another hack for you if you're not finding the prices you want for your rental, then a good next step is to do a little bit of research on what smaller local companies might not show up in all car rental search engines. Sometimes local companies even charge significantly less than larger brands will. There's no guarantee that there will be local companies like this everywhere, but it's definitely worth researching. I recently visited Tenerife and the Canary Islands during peak winter season, and I was able to save around 100 euros by booking with a local company that didn't show up in most of the search engines. This hack can take some time as it involves sitting down and doing some research, but for those times where it's hard to find lower rates elsewhere, this one is definitely worth keeping in mind. Now we already know that you can often save some money by shaving a few hours off of your rental by picking it up a few hours later or dropping it off a few hours earlier. But sometimes renting for a longer period of time can actually save you some money. Rental car pricing can be kind of strange sometimes, and there are all different types of rates that will kick in. Say you need a four-day rental dropping off and picking up at LAX for some set dates in April. Europe car rentals are actually available for $59 less for one week than they are for four days. So you could book a week and save $59. If you do utilize this hack though, make sure to read the fine print and verify that there aren't any fees for returning your car way too early. But based on my experience, when I've done this, rental car companies are pretty much always happy to get their cars back early. But regardless, trying out a bunch of different lengths in time can also become time consuming. So I usually reserve this hack as a kind of backup for when my other hacks aren't working that well. Another rental car hack that can save you a ton of money is doing your research on insurance for your rental. Using a good travel credit card to get coverage for your rental can be a great idea, but it's also super important to read the fine print. It's likely that you'll have to decline any insurance being offered by your rental car company in order for the primary insurance from your car to kick in, and many cards may only offer secondary insurance. On top of that, there are many cards that won't give you primary insurance if you're renting within your home country. If you're US-based, I find that the Chase Sapphire Preferred and Chase Sapphire Reserve cards offer pretty good coverage. But if you're not based in the US, don't discount car rental insurance via your credit card. Many credit cards available in countries around the world offer car rental insurance, and it's often not a widely publicized perk. If you're not sure if your card has this benefit, then just read through the terms and conditions. But even when you do have your rental car insurance figured out, there's a good chance that the agent will try to upsell you something when you're picking up your car. Sadly, most rental car companies incentivize employees to sell things like upgrades, insurance, and fuel at the counter. This is one of the worst parts about renting a car in my opinion, and whenever I'm able to avoid this experience, I'm quite relieved. But often there's just no way around it. And the best thing to do is to be as polite as possible while maintaining that you've booked your rental car exactly how you want it already. A number of times I've even been offered paid upgrades and rejected them, and then handed keys to the exact same car that the agent wanted me to pay to upgrade to. Since I typically book standard economy cars, rental car companies can often run out of them and then have to give you something else. This is just how rental car companies often operate. And while it's no
no fun to have to say no over and over again? The best strategy is to know exactly what you booked and be sure that your insurance covers everything that you need covered. Another one of my favorite car rental hacks is to check different countries' websites for the best prices. You can often find drastically different prices depending on the country and currency that you're searching with. So say you need a rental car for a week, picking up and dropping off at the airport in Montreal, Canada. A search on the US kayak website yields an economy car with Avis for $530 for the week. But if you head over to the Irish kayak website, you can book the exact same thing for 294 euros, which is about 318 US dollars. So just by looking at a different country's website, you can reserve the same thing for over $200 less. Luck of the Irish? Well, not really. The Spanish kayak website has the same deal too. This hack has really saved me a lot of money. In fact, it's the one that got me that $2 car rental that I was talking about earlier. Back in the summer of 2022, I needed to get from Marseille, France to Grenoble, France, and train tickets were already running a little over 50 euros. So even though I had originally envisioned the trip on a train, I decided to compare rental car prices. I tried lots of different currencies and looked through a few different countries' websites that use the euro. Prices at first seemed to be in the typical 50 euro range, though it was already clear that I could book that rental without any of the typical one-way rental rental fees. But I kept my search up and added in some more city locations. And lo and behold, a car rental with Enterprise that fit my needs popped up for 2 euros and 7 cents. Now this hack has saved me and many people I know bucket loads of money. But it is important to beware that certain rates might require you to have residence or a driver's license from a certain country. When you find a lower rate on another country's website or in a different currency, it's really important to always read through the details of the rental that you want to book. I've successfully saved hundreds of dollars on many occasions booking rentals this way, but then again, I read the fine print. And then it's really important to always, always, always document your rental before driving it and after returning it. Some locations will provide a damage chart, but don't let that dissuade you from doing your own documentation. Having a time-stamped video of your rental car before driving it and after you're done driving it is a great way to save yourself a headache. In case of any incorrect damage charges after returning your car, then you have proof. My wife and I always take these videos of the exterior and the interior of our car and make a point of also including the full gas tank of the video when returning the car. That said, I rarely have to deal with surprise charges. But since there's always a possibility of them happening when you're renting a car, it's best to have the documentation that you need. I hope these car rental hacks have been useful for you, and if they have, then make sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more travel videos. And if you've got your own secret car rental hack to share, then definitely drop it down below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and happy hacking!